Welcome. This is Dr. Gary Zamet, President and CEO of Clinical Labs, speaking to you today about psoriasis. I'm going to deliver a brief presentation entitled, What Every Patient Should Know About Psoriasis, in which I'll be providing you with information about the diagnosis and treatment of this, dis this disorder, and also talk to you about a new clinical trial that is underway at ClinoLab's Clinical Research Unit in New York City. Psoriasis is a chronic autoimmune disease that appears on the skin. It occurs when one's immune system sends out um, faulty signals to the body to accelerate the growth of skin tissue or skin cells. Now, there are five types of psoriasis, plaque psoriasis, guttate psoriasis, inverse psoriasis, pustular psoriasis, and erythrodermic psoriasis. I'm going to uh, talk to you about three of those five types momentarily now. First and foremost is plaque psoriasis, also known as psoriasis vulgaris. This is the most common form of psoriasis, and it affects more than 80% of people who have psoriasis. In this particular form of psoriasis, there are patches of silvery white or scaly skin known as plaques that appear at various points on the person's body. Psoriatic erythroderma psoriasis is a widespread inflammation and exfoliation or wearing off of the skin. And then finally, Pustular psoriasis is characterized by red uh, pustules or uh, bumps that may be filled with some pus or fluid that are then surrounded by red and inflamed skin. This is one image of uh, plaque psoriasis showing a person's um, uh, elbow and part of their arm, and you can see the dry, flaky uh, skin on that skin surface with that silvery appearance uh, to it. And in this slide, you can see an example of pustular psoriasis that is affecting an individual's finger here, um, and you can see the yellowish uh, marks with the pus uh, bubbles underneath. Now, psoriasis uh, is characterized by many signs and symptoms. First and foremost, however, is incessant uh, itching. People who experience uh, psoriasis uh, will experience discomfort of their skin um, on the affected areas, and it'll it, it will make them want to itch or scratch those uh, areas. This is associated with pain or discomfort. There can be swelling of the affected areas. And finally, and not to be taken uh, lightly, is quality of life impairment. Um, in a recent uh, assessment completed by the National Psoriasis, Psoriasis Foundation, uh, more than 70% of people who suffered from psoriasis said that it was a significant problem in their day-to-day -day lives. And um, more than half of them reported that this impacted um, them emotionally. They were self-conscious, um, embarrassed, and many of them avoided um, social activities and limited their close contacts with others in order to avoid that embarrassment. So quality of life impairments can be a significant component of uh, psoriasis. Um, one of the bullet points here 
relates to impairment in social and occupational functioning. So psoriasis can, psoriasis can even impact one's ability to function on the job. One patient recently commented to me that until she received treatment for her psoriasis, she was unable to hold a steady job because of the uh, discomfort that she experienced, her chronic itching, and the difficulties that she had with one employer to the next in sustaining gainful employment. Now, um, the causes of psoriasis are not um, fully understood. Psoriasis is believed to have uh, a genetic component, uh, but there are basically two primary hypotheses here. Uh, first is that it's a disorder of skin cell reproduction that results in excessive skin cell growth. As I mentioned to you before, um, in psoriasis, the immune system sends out these faulty signals um, that tell um, the body to accelerate skin cell growth. And, um, and thus creating these psoriatic plaques, or the plaque psoriasis. Um, another hypothesis is that psoriasis is an immune disorder in which T cells become active and trigger the release of cytokines, and thus result in the production of excessive skin cells. Now, although we don't know the, uh, the causes of psoriasis, uh, or we don't fully understand the causes, we do have information about the course of this illness. Um, the precipitants of psoriasis are often unknown. The first outbreak of psoriasis may follow a period of physical or mental stress, and worsening may be associated with a variety of factors such as stress, changes in climate or season, medication such as beta blockers or lithium, use of products that contain alcohol or nicotine, and even certain grooming products like hairspray have been known to be associated with the worsening of psoriasis. Now, um, as I mentioned to you, um, there is believed to be a genetic uh, component to psoriasis, and therefore there are familial patterns. There is a significant increase in the likelihood of a person having psoriasis if any first-degree family member also has that condition. That means mother, father, brother, sister, son, or daughter, um, the likelihood that you would have psoriasis goes up significantly. Now, um, let's talk about how the diagnosis of psoriasis is made. Well, first and foremost, it's typically based on physical examination, based on the appearance of the skin. There are times when a skin biopsy or a sample of tissue might be taken and examined under a microscope and this might be um, important in order to rule out other conditions that might be associated with um, dry or flaky skin. For example, um, the dermatologist or uh, other skilled practitioner might rule out other conditions like seborrhea or a fungal infection by physical examination as well as the examination of a skin tissue sample. Um, there are uh, people who may um, experience um, psoriatic arthritis. This is arthritis that um, begins uh, after, or sorry, this is arthritis that begins after the onset of arthritis. It causes an inflammation in the joints and between 10 and 40 percent of all people who suffer from psoriasis also experience psoriatic arthritis. Um, and finally, and this, 
this bullet point should be a major bullet point, this one at the bottom. Um, there is no blood test or other um, clinical laboratory tests that can be used to diagnose psoriasis. It's really based on the information that I uh, have just provided to you on the uh, basis of physical examination and perhaps the examination of a skin tissue sample. Now, um, there are multiple treatment options for people who suffer from arthritis. The um, uh, first might be the use of topical agents. There are things that people can use at home without a prescription that might provide relief. These are things like petroleum jelly, um, the application of um, moisturizers or creams um, that might help to soothe the affected areas. There are also um, medicated creams and ointments that can help to reduce the inflammation and redness of the skin and um, help to um, clear away those affected area of, of areas of skin from that um, scaly, itchy uh, patch. So um, ointments such as topicort, um, anthralin, or ointments that contain vitamin D3 uh, might be used or recommended by one's physician to uh, provide relief using a topical agent. Now, uh, phototherapy is also used. This is um, light therapy. There are certain wavelengths of light that have been found to be um, helpful and effective in relieving symptoms of psoriasis. Um, the amount of light may vary person to person, but, um, but this has been used quite effectively for quite a number of years. Um, sometimes um, light is combined with uh, sorolin, which combines the, the, this oral or a topical drug with the exposure to ultraviolet light in order um, to reduce the uh, acceleration of skin cell production. Um, this uh, treatment is sometimes called uh, PUVA. Um, now, uh, thirdly and finally, there are systemic agents that have been used. These are uh, uh, medications that people take either by pill or in injection in order to relieve the uh, symptoms of psoriasis. The three uh, main treatments that have been used are uh, drugs such as methotrexate, um, cyclosporine, for retinoids, uh, which have been found to be safe and effective in the treatment of psoriasis. Um, there are um, uh, other medications that have been developed for the treatment of psoriasis as well. Um, and um, uh, these medications uh, can be used uh, alone or in combination with, um, with ointments. Um, in uh, 2008, the FDA approved three new treatments uh, for psoriasis. One is Taclinex scalp, which is a topical ointment for treating uh, psoriasis. Um, uh, the other is uh, a drug called Adalimumab, or uh, the brand name Humira which is approved to treat moderate to severe psoriasis. Um, and, uh, and then finally, uh, a drug to treat severe psoriasis, um, Delara. Now, one of the reasons that I'm talking to you about uh, psoriasis today is because we currently have a clinical trial underway in New York City uh, to investigate the um, systemic exposure to an investigational topical ointment um, in people with plaque psoriasis. Um, this trial has been uh, going on for a short time, but we're looking for uh, participants who might be interested in being involved in this study. The study involves a screening phase in which 
the um, uh, psoriasis diagnosis is made. The psoriasis is examined by a physician. Uh, a medical history and uh, physical exam is done. Clinical laboratory tests are performed. And based on the information collected at the screening visit, uh, the uh, clinical team will determine if candidates meet the inclusion and exclusion criteria for study participation. For those who uh, meet criteria, uh, they can go on to a treatment period of 22 days, during which time uh, daily clinical assessments will be performed and blood and urine tests will be obtained periodically. Um, on some days, there, will, there are um, several blood tests obtained. On other days, there are fewer blood tests or no blood tests at all. Um, as with all of the, or uh, virtually all, of the clinical trials that we do at ClinLab's Clinical Research Unit, there is compensation offered to people for participation in the trial. Um, the compensation is, in, is intended to provide payment for the um, time that patients contribute to their clinical trial participation. For those of you who are interested in participating in a trial, um, please contact us and contact us today at 212-994-4567. Uh, or email us at participate at clinolabs.com. You can also visit our website, uh, which is clinolabs.com forward slash participate. Or uh, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. I hope this information presented to you today is helpful in your understanding of psoriasis. Um, I hope it helps you either engage in a dialogue with your own primary care physician or specialist, or that it prompts you to call us to inquire about participating in a trial. Thank you very much.